You ready to ram it in the wrong slot? In other words, one of the most common mistakes when building a PC is putting the RAM in the wrong spot. Because I mean, there might be four motherboard spots. You just put your two sticks of RAM in there and away you go. You turn on the computer, it boots, you run games, and you never realize what performance you're missing. Because if you get the sticks of RAM in the wrong spots, your computer's not gonna be running in dual channel mode. It'll be running in single channel mode. But how much of a performance difference does that actually make? Well, it can depend on the situation. That's what we're testing out in this video. First, let's look at a few uh, set benchmarks where we can control all of the variables and see how it goes. First up, we have the Red Dead Redemption 2 benchmark. Now, to be clear, I'm running this on my RTX 2070, and my processor is a Intel i5-9600K at stock clock speeds. Now, it's possible that running on like an AMD processor or a different Intel processor would see some different results here, but this is a small hobby channel of mine. I have my own personal gaming PC to test this on and that's it. Anyway, let's take a look at the results. So first up, I'm running at my native ultra wide 3440 by 1440 at ultra settings. And we're seeing Red Dead Redemption 2 scoring 50.15 frames per second and when I run it in single channel mode, I'm getting 49.19 frames per second, which is honestly within the margin of error and is maybe a 2% or so difference. It's not that big of a deal. So does that mean that single channel doesn't matter at all? Actually, no. Let's look at the 1080p medium setting results and see what happens. So at 1080p medium, we're seeing 89.75 frames per second average with dual channel RAM, and we're seeing 81.15 frames per second with single channel RAM. That's a much more distinct difference. So why did the graphics settings and resolution matter? Well, it's because it depends on whether you're being CPU bottlenecked or whether you're being GPU bottlenecked. And we're gonna see similar, similar results here in Tomb Raider. So Tomb Raider, again, at my native 3440 by 1440 at ultra settings, I get 64 frames per second on my dual channel when I ran the benchmark, and I got 63 frames per second when I did it in single channel. Once again, that's like a one or 2% difference, one frame per second within the margin of error, not that big of a deal. But dropping it down to 1080p medium, where the load on the GPU is less, so the CPU CPU is more likely to create bottlenecks, we're now seeing 118 frames per second on the dual channel and only 101 frames per second on the single channel. So again, why is this happening? It's that CPU bottleneck. If you're like, wait, what's a bottleneck? How do I tell which one's which? Well, we'll see more of this happening in the next test I'm running, which is let's actually stress test this thing. What if I simulated a live streaming environment where I'm gonna be running OBS in the background to not only record the gameplay footage, but it'll also be running the green screen, which takes some processing power to, you know, green screen myself into the game as if I was live streaming. And we'll be taking a look at the results and you'll be able to see the GPU and CPU usage and watch as we reduce the settings, how the CPU bottleneck creates some problems. Okay, welcome to the streaming simulation here. In other words, we're running OBS, I'm running a green screen, I'm uh, playing a demanding game. This is Cyberpunk. And you'll notice in the top left, since we're not running an actual benchmark here for comparison, I am using MSI Afterburner on the top left there to look at our GPU usage, our CPU usage, and give us some frame rate counts. Um, you notice there are three frame, frame rate counters there. We have um, average, and we have current. Well, I guess, okay, the, the one in front there is the current frame rate, right? On the far left, we have the middle one being the average, and we have the 1% lows. I'm just gonna be running a, a few little laps around the corner here. And then let's also do this at a few different settings. But as you can see here, my average right now is around 39 frames per second. And these, I believe, are ultra settings. Now, I'm curious again how much the CPU is gonna affect this at different settings. So let's pop into the settings and play with things a little bit. 
Uh, so graphic settings, let's drop us down from ultra to medium and then take another look at things. I'm going to reset the frame rate counters. Okay, so you'll notice that we are now, looks like we're still more GPU bottlenecked than CPU bottlenecked, but notice that our CPU usage is getting closer to that 100% mark, which would indicate that we would be um, bound by the CPU. Although you can still be CPU bottlenecked without 100% usage because I don't have all the cores showing and, and, and all of that. Okay. All right, so I ran a couple of laps here. We can see that we're more at like the 55%, uh, 55 frames per second average. Okay, now to reduce the load even further on the GPU, what if we kick on some DLSS? Uh, and again, you're probably familiar with this, but it lowers the internal rendering resolution of the game and then AI algorithm upsamples up to your native. So we are now, again, I will uh, reset. Okay, so with the DLSS running, notice that my GPU usage is down and my CPU usage is up. We're close to 100% uh, usage. In other words, we're now likely at a CPU bottleneck. I did reset my frame rate counter, right? Let me do that again just to be sure. Okay, let's run a couple of laps here. And... What are we at? 68, 69, 68, 69, 70, 69. <laughs> okay, we're around 68. Would have been cooler if it was 69, whatever. doesn't matter. Okay, that should be some good comparisons so that we can now uh, take, you know, stick the RAM in the ROM slot and see what happens. Okay, so we've stuck the RAM in the wrong slot. We are now in single channel mode, but still with 16 gigabytes. And uh, I've bumped the settings back to ultra and we're still at 1440p. And let me double check, I've got no, yeah, no DLSS on. So we're back in that same scene and I'm gonna reset my frame rate counters and here we go. We're still running OBS and the green screen and all that. I believe we were at a 39 frames per second average in this scene um, in the dual channel mode. Hey, I think we're actually seeing a difference. This seems to be 36 frames per second. And that seems pretty consistent. The 39 felt pretty consistent when we were doing the dual channel. So we are seeing a difference here. I feel like my CPU usage is higher than before, but I don't know. Anyway, let's jump to some other settings. So I think what we did last time was we chucked it down to medium settings, leaving the resolution the same, resetting the frame rate counters. If I remember right, we were at a 55 frame per second average when we did this with dual channel. And man, if I'm remembering those numbers right, I mean, I can edit it in if I'm not. <laughs> um, if we're down to 41 instead of 55, look at that CPU usage. Huh. We appear to be CPU bottlenecked with single channel. It's having a bigger impact than I thought it would. All right, let's switch this to, again, DLSS. I think I put it on balanced last time. Again, that's lowering the internal resolution to further decrease the GPU demand. We're likely to be completely CPU bottlenecked now. We were getting 69 frames per second at these settings before. I remember that number. <laughs> All right. And... We're stuck down here at around 41. So it's looking like in this particular scene in Cyberpunk, the CPU usage is high enough that apparently the single channel is completely bottlenecking the system. 
All right, we saw that Cyberpunk did not enjoy single channel memory, especially while also trying to run the game uh, simultaneously with OBS and a green screen and all of that. So, by the way, I did end up kind of doing the same thing on Cyberpunk without recording the footage on OBS, without running the green screen, and the results were better for single channel. Uh, compared to what you saw in this clip, but they still didn't match dual channel, especially as the graphics settings lowered, similar to what we saw with Red Dead Redemption 2 and with Tomb Raider. By the way, I was also curious if this mattered at all for productivity. For me, my main productivity use for my gaming PC is rendering videos like this one. I use DaVinci Resolve, and a lot of times my videos in, are in 4K, so I went back to one of the videos I posted uh, recently, and I rendered it again, timed the result, got 35 minutes and five seconds on my dual channel and then I did it again in single channel rendered the exact same video and it took 36 minutes and 44 seconds so it did take a little bit longer on single channel but that's such a small difference that I don't know if that's margin of error or maybe it did slow it down a bit but it's not a huge percentage difference where I'd be overly concerned anyway my final thoughts on the subject well I mean like, why throw away performance if you don't need to? Stick it in the right slot, guys. Anyway. <laughs> I'd like to thank all of my subscribers. You guys are beautiful people. If you want to comment on the video, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I read every comment on my channel. I reply to as many as I can. And um, stick it in the right slot, guys. 